material was developed in the early phases of our space program and until it was developed. We're a little more than a minute away from the point in the reentry when communications will be blacked out as the ionized sheath envelops the spacecraft and it's plunged back toward Earth. Until this material was developed, that we could not occur proceed with the man's program. 16 minutes 42 seconds after the hour. This is where the iron nerves of a test pilot are put to the test. You see bits of the ablative shield flucking off there. Uh, there would be a great orange glow outside of the cockpit windows now, according to the testimony of our earlier astronauts. But even as that is going on, and this spectacular picture is developing around him, Shara is slowly uh, controlling the spacecraft, bringing, reading his instruments very carefully, computers, and uh, making uh, these, this roll maneuver, rolling the spacecraft to take advantage of the lift factors. All right, now they have entered the point where communications are impossible. They are estimated they will emerge from this blacked out configuration at 21 minutes, 31 seconds after the hour. This magnificent color simulation, we get a very good picture of what's going on up there. And through our uh, Gemini mock-up out at St. Louis, we watch Bob Sharp's hand as he uh, is flicking the controls there in that roll maneuver to take advantage of the lift factor, lift built into this spacecraft. now they should be getting information at Houston as to how close it looks like Shara is going to be able to bring that spacecraft uh, into the landing area. Shara wants to do a lot better than uh, the previous Geminis just for his own satisfaction and also to prove that if all your onboard equipment works this lift factor can be utilized as a hope. steady hum on the line here. Elliot C now is putting in a call to Gemini 7 advising him that six is in blackout. Seven says they're just drifting. They're not attempting to control attitudes. They're not going to watch for this re-entry. It was not believed that Gemini Seven could see the re-entry at any case. Uh, at this point, uh, six is, uh, while it might be a might be seen because of the flame of the uh, re-entry. It is still uh, a hundred and, oh, around a hundred and twenty miles below Gemini 7 and some distance behind Gemini 7 now. During this blackout period, the slant range figured by the computers is about 115 statute miles between seven and six. And it is daylight. Uh, there is no blackness of the sky against which they could see the flames of the re-entry burn. Here are the helicopters from the WASP out over the sea. They've got just uh, nine and a half minutes to splash down. That blackout period should be ending in about uh, uh, two minutes from now, two minutes and 15 seconds to be precise. They are now at about 100,000 feet. They have done most of what they can do to guide their spacecraft at this point. This is Gemini Control Houston. We're about two minutes away from the planned emergence from this blacked out period. We've been having a little conversation with seven getting more information on their thruster problem. We'll be able to recap on that after this re-entry is completed. A minute, 
45 seconds. So they come out of the blackout now. Radar tracks them. Presumably they're in good shape. We have no word until that first voice communication is again a fingers crossed situation. seconds now under the calculated figures for blackout to end. Actually, they're still getting a burn uh, at this moment, although our simulator shows now them the wasp, clear. Uh, we're advised has radar contact with the spacecraft. We still not ha have not heard from it. This simulation is not precise at the moment, as I say. They're still getting a burn. They're still in the flame of re-entry and will be until just about Grand this second. Turk has acquisition on six. Elliot C is putting in a call. Stafford comes back with the first call from Elliot C. We read you loud and clear. There they are. They've come through all right now for the deployment of the parachutes, splashdown, and Gemini 6's successful flight is over. They've come back into the atmosphere. They're in the clear. Now just for the deployment of the chutes. The drogue chute should be coming out in uh, just um, one minute from now. The drogue slows down the chute. Uh, Six the is being advised. They have radar contact from the WASP. The radar has them in view. The spacecraft is now not in the position you see it here. This shows you the roll maneuver. That's why we wanted to bring this up for you. The roll maneuver that they would be performing to attempt uh, to to uh, use that lift factor. Actually, the spacecraft is now blunt end forward, falling almost vertically, uh, directly toward Earth, not in the side position as you see it here. The drogue chute deployment uh, should come now in uh, some 23 seconds. Grand Turk Island is communicating with the spacecraft, as you heard Mr. Paul say. The altimeter is off the peg. That means that the altimeter is now working. Uh, they're, well, they're coming within the 50,000 foot range. The drogue should go right now. Let's wait to hear from Grand Turk. That's our simulation in color of what the drogue looks like. There's the drogue, the drogue is out. And Airboss 1 has just put in a call. Airboss is an airplane in command of Commander D.A. Barksdale of North Kingston, Rhode Island. He's slightly uprange from the uh, carrier WASP. And now in one more minute, the main parachute should deploy. At 10,600 feet, the drogue it does just what its name implies, slows down the spacecraft so the main, when it blossoms full-blown above the spacecraft, will not be ripped loose. It purely shoots simply to slow down the spacecraft. Elliot C. is asking Six for a readout as to how the reentry went on his needles and eyeball, his uh, eight ball on board. Uh, this but this is the point when communications get a little sticky. Uh, and we'll probably have to wait for that word uh, when they're back down on the water. This is a simulation of the uh, no answer from six of the main chute deployment, which should come now in another 25 seconds. The WASP advises they're tracking the uh, space cap now. They have a plot about something over 30 miles. Thirty miles. That'll be closer than anybody yet has landed. If that turns out to be it, we should have main shoot. We've had no visual report from the carrier. 
Main shoot should have come 15 seconds ago. 20 now. Main shoot, as you see in the simulator there, has deployed, but we do not have word that that has happened yet. The radar plot from the carrier says it's about 33 miles from the WASP. Now that shows the spacecraft as, after main chute deployment, that uh, brought into a horizontal position for landing. The parachute is built with those vents in it, which increase the lift of the parachute. We still have not had word one minute after the main chute was to have deployed that it has deployed. Main chute should have gone out a minute and 15 seconds ago. No word from the wasp that they have sighted the parachute, nor word from the ground. That the aircraft uh, designated Air Boss 1 is operating about 15 miles west of the carrier wasp. They've advised they do not yet have six in sight. communication uh, becomes difficult with the spacecraft at this point uh, because it is getting lower of course to the ground and line of sight uh, therefore is not so good to the various tracking stations however that's one of the communications features uh, of the recovery ships the aircraft so they are supposed to be able to get in touch we have had no word that main chute has deployed and the time is now two minutes since that deployment should have taken place. Two minutes and 25 seconds. Two minutes and a half now. In the past, we have had a uh, word directly upon deployment. Uh, it's always the thrilling moment that we know that all is well is when we get that deployment of the main chute. When it's out, then the craft is being slowly lowered to the surface. It's now three minutes since the deployment should have taken place. No word yet. Airbus 1 and Gemini 6 are now in communication. Oh, it's very Lord. difficult to understand the conversation here, but we did hear 6 call out there at 3,000 feet just a few seconds ago. 3,000 feet, that's 7,000 feet down from where the deployment took place. The band is struck up, I gather, on the WASP. The WASP advised apparently, to turn out 2,000 feet. Apparently all is well with Gemini 6. The main chute has deployed, although we never got that word. 1,000 feet. So the splashdown will be right at the precise second, which means the main chute deployed at the precise second. Why we never got the word, we'll never know, but it gave us an awful start here, I'll tell you, while we waited. Splash time should be coming uh, in uh, just... The WASP now estimates the landing point at 30 miles, 30 miles west of the WASP, back toward Miami. Air Boss, a correction on its earlier position, it is located about 15 miles west of the point where the spacecraft is landing. That's about 35 statute miles away from the WASP. And that's getting more precise now than we've been so far. Now the WASP is turned in the direction of the landing area. They are moving on it at a rate of 25 knots. the rate of 25 knots. Uh, that's just about an hour's steaming time for the WASP. We show a splash time here on our board at the Mission Control Center at 29 minutes and 9 seconds after the hour. Twenty-nine minutes and nine seconds after the hour. Twenty-nine minutes and twelve seconds. Still no visual contacts, but uh, we are satisfied they're on the water.